The former Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, has been sentenced to 15 months in prison for activities relating around payoffs that he made to silence people who he had sexually abused when they were minors and he was a coach in their school. Hmm. And so now this has been going on for a while. He received his sentencing today. Now, Speaker Hastert uh, was second in line of secession uh, to the presidency of the United States, one of the most powerful positions in the government. And these were allegations that he was carrying with him while he was sitting. And he was paying off people that he had agreed to pay off. This wasn't blackmail, it was determined. He was withdrawing huge amounts of money that were uh, flagging bankers as to why he was making these, these $50,000 withdrawals. It, it, it went around the uh, banking regulations. So he wasn't arrested or convicted of child molestation because those charges had passed the statute of limitations. Although the judge, when he threw down a sentence, made it very clear that he was throwing it down with a certain amount of prejudice towards the behavior that he has admitted to. Right. In terms of the child molestation. Right. Yeah, he has, yeah, you're right. So he's admitted to those offenses. He's admitted to the fact that he was a serial child molester. And I just want to make that clear because it wasn't just one or two children that he abused. It was a series and it was calculated and he was an abusive position, as is frequently the case, an abusive position um, whilst he was coach of the local uh, sports team, yeah, uh, the, the school. He was a wrestling coach and he wrestling victimized coach. the Thank people you. associated with his 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 students who were on the wrestling team and uh, various student coaches, et cetera. There's four people specifically who are part of these allegations, which he does not deny any, any longer, but they're not charges that he can be brought up on. Right. Uh, now, the judge, Judge Thomas Durkin, a federal district court judge, when he brought the sentence down, made it clear. He said, nothing is more stunning than having serial child molester and house, a speaker of the house in the same sentence. He said, the defendant is a serial child molester, making it very clear that this sentence wasn't just being brought down because of these banking activities. Right, right. But that's what ultimately what they've been able to grab him on. At the, t at the time that he was Speaker of the House, he was advocating very vociferously for life sentences for serial child molesters, mm -hmm. interestingly, Mark. Yeah, not, and... Not a, a degree of irony, one would, su one would suggest. The lady doth protest too much, methinks, is the, is the quote from Shakespeare. This judge went on to say, if there's a public shaming of the defendant because of the conduct he's engaged in, so be it. So the judge made it clear he wasn't just passing a sentence mm -hmm. for banking activities and wanted to shame Dennis Hastert, who, by the way, uh, had agreed to pay out $3.4 million to uh, the person who was making the allegations. He eventually paid out $1.7 million. This is a man who was a, a lifetime politician, uh, 20 years in Congress, so one wonders where they get that kind of money to be paying right. out in, in, in hush money. Uh, it, it, all, it all is of a sort when we wonder who it is that we're entrusting our government to when they're, when they're standing in, the, in these uh, hallowed halls. Right. What exactly? There, there's something to be said for, uh, well, there is that age-old debate as to you know, uh, the right to having a private life and the right to you know, so that when people get caught, I don't know, having an affair, let's say. That's one to what, thing. To, one, to what extent is it anybody's business if it doesn't impact on my ability to do my job? You could argue on the, on the flip side, say, well, that would impact on your judgment, the fact that you would put certain things at risk. I don't necessarily will know if I want you running my government. That doesn't even begin to fall into, this particular instance doesn't even begin to fall into that category. This is out and right a criminal offense an egregious, despicable act that was continued on a consistent, and as in the judge's words, and in his words, a serial nature. Yeah, so a you, don't, you can't even child begin to run. Molester. It wasn't a ser serial, uh, you know, somebody who's cheating on their spouse. This was a serial Correct. child Correct. molester. So you can't even begin to draw that parallel in terms of your right to privacy ends right there. And yeah, there. and former House Majority Leader Tom DeLay came to his defense before the sentencing acting as if it was some sort of transgression against his uh, fidelity in his marriage or what. He said this, so I know his heart and have been have seen it up close and personal 
We all have our flaws, but Dennis Hastert has very few. He's a good man that loves the Lord. Well, you can have few flaws. If one of them is raping children, that's a pretty egregious uh, failing. So you don't dismiss, well, you know, he's generally pretty good, good God-loving man, except for the part where he victimizes children. Yeah, and abuses, their posi and abuses his position of power and, as you said, rapes small children. Yeah, this Apart from that, he's a really nice yeah. guy. Just don't leave him alone with your kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please go easy on him. He's a yeah. really God-loving man. Um, and, and, yeah, you're right. I, it's, I, I love the fact that when the Republicans come out and particularly want to have an interpretive view of the law, because that was one of the other quotes. Was saying, mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm not asking you to, to ignore the crimes, but I just want some kind of middle ground here. Let's all just be reasonable. And I love the fact that they want to have that broad, interpretive, however you want to phrase it, approach to the legal system and approach to the law when it suits them. Right. But when it's when it's anything else, it's black and white, and there is no room for maneuver. Listen, I'm sure for the most part he was a perfectly okay individual. But the reality is he had he, he committed these horrible, horrific unforgivable acts that were illegal and some of the most egregious things you could ever possibly do. Yeah, and don't you don't you dare be uh, two gay men who want to get married and have a cake made for you. <laughs> but, you know, uh, we should just try to forget and the, these, you know, we all do things wrong. Yeah. And so, yeah, go easy on him. And he's been sentenced to 15 months. The judge is, is, is considering whether or not he should do that time in a prison hospital because of his, his physical con condition is deteriorating, although the judge does not seem to be in the mood to be lenient with him. They may have to allow him to serve the time in a prison hospital, which may isolate him from the general population, uh, which would be doing him a favor.